Uh, O.J., we all support our prayer plays. Blessed Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you again for the opportunity you've given us to be in your house today, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you'll soften our hearts and open our minds, Lord, to absorb your precious words that we're going to hear today, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you'll answer each and every prayer request that's lifted up to you today, Lord, both the spoken and the unspoken. And, Lord, we ask that you'll guide and direct each and every one of us, Lord. And, Lord, we ask these things in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Laying up my treasures in that home above, trusting fully, trusting in the Savior's love, doing what I for heaven's holy dove I'm getting ready to leave this world yes. getting ready to leave this world getting ready for the gates of pearl keeping my record bright Watching both day and night, I'm getting ready to leave this world. Trusting in the riches of His saving grace, in each earthly trial I His love can trace. Sure that up in heaven I shall find a place I'm getting ready to leave this world Yes, that's right Getting ready to leave this world Getting ready for the gates of pearl Keeping my record bright Watching both day and night, I'm getting ready to leave this world. <clears throat> to prepare a mansion, Jesus said, I'll go. If it were not true, I would have told you so. Just a little while to linger here below. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Getting ready to leave this world. Getting ready for the gates of pearl. Keeping Watching both day and night, I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready to leave this world. <laughs> That's right, amen.
Is that the old ship of Zion I see at the stern of the ship is the captain I can hear as he calls out my name get on board for this old ship is leaving and it will never pass this way again That's right, man. when I step on board I'll be leaving all my sorrows and heartaches behind I'll be leaving with Jesus the captain sailing out on the old ship of Zion. Amen. You got to get on board when it comes by. Ain't that right? I like that. Both of them songs. Amen. Are you ready? Anybody ready? Yes. I'm ready. Get on board. Amen. Take your Bibles this morning, we're going to go to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1. Romans uh, chapter 1. Let me start reading verse 18, verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. It says, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without this excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changing the glory of the incorruptible God into an image, made like unto corruptible man, to, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26 says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile afflictions, for even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards one and to another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet. Verse 28 says, In even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despitefully proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable, unmerciful. Verse 32 says, Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Yeah, that's right. Oh, a few Wednesday nights ago, as uh, I, I forget what we were 
looking at. Uh, somehow this uh, question came up on uh, verse 28, talks about uh, turning over to a reprobate mind. And uh, we, the question was asked, is there a point that God just stops working on somebody? He stops calling them. And you know, it's a hard question for me to answer. And I can't give you the exact answer, but I can tell you something this morning. I'm confident to tell you this morning, there is a time where God says, that's enough. Yeah, that's, right. that's what he says. It, it, there's a, I'm confident we can, I can tell you that. We, we, we know that God, praise God, is very long-suffering, isn't he? Yeah, right. I tell you, he's got a high tolerance level. It's hard to comprehend the level that he has. I thought he could wait in line at Walmart for hours and not complain. Anyone, can anyone do that? No, you can't wait 10 minutes, can we? We, we don't have a high tolerance a level. You'll find we start to lose our cool, don't we? And maybe this week you say, yeah, I, I reached that this week. I, I don't have a very high tolerance. I have a God that is long-suffering, a God that is patient, a God that he goes farther and farther beyond that we'd ever dream his patience towards you and I. But the fact of the matter, there is a time, he says, that's enough. It's interesting as we watch people, I, I like to watch people and see how we react. I'm glad I, sometimes I need to watch myself. I remember years ago, uh, some of you remember it, we had a, uh, I think it was a Valentine uh, uh, gathering, and it was at a new restaurant down in Comiskey. Anybody remember that? And we all gathered over there, kind of excited, it was a new place, and good food, and we got there, and boy, it was full of people. And I don't think they were used to that, and we, we waited, and we waited, and we waited. And as we were waiting, I noticed the look on each other's face. And we're starting to lose our cool. Even us good Christian folks here. I think I remember someone says, I have means to give them a, tell them a piece of my mind. Now, I can't remember. It did seem like an eternity. We finally did get waited on. And we finally did get some food. But it was one of those tests that I, we were having a hard time with. We could, uh, I see it all the time, a lot of time. I believe a, a great example of, of great patience is a mother or a grandmother. They, they've got some great, they, they have a great uh, sustaining ability. You can hear the kids, they're, they're making loud noise. They're running. They're even screaming. And every once in a while, I tell you, I've seen it where even a mother you know what she says? Maybe she's heard some glass break. She said, that's enough! You ever heard that? They say, that's enough. Right now, sit down, be quiet. You know, uh, what you find is a breaking point. We all have it, don't we? Do you know what? God's breaking point ain't like yours and mine. Praise God. Amen? Amen. We'd been sat in the corner a long time ago. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we reach that. Sometimes it's, we're sitting in traffic. It don't take much for you and I. You all act pretty, you all act like I don't know what I'm talking about here, but I know how you are, you're like me. And our breaking point isn't very high, but praise God, God is. Say, Brother Brad, God, God is a God, he's not like that, he doesn't have a breaking point, he just continues and continues. 
The Bible said he is slow to anger, but he said he'll not always, he'll not always hold that back. The Bible's pretty clear and gives us many examples that when God says, I've had enough. You'll find that when it comes to sin, this is our text here, we find that, I believe you can find here that God, when it came to sin, you find in the verse 18 it says, Notice what it said. It says that for the wrath of God is revealed. You know what he said? I've had enough. I've just had enough. We find in our text here, it, it's, you say, well, when does that take place? You know what? God says he has had enough to those that know the truth. He didn't say it to some and said, well, I didn't, they didn't know any better. This text is talking about those that have heard the truth. Yeah. They know what the truth is. And God will give opportunity before he says that's enough. It says here that they, they know. It says they, it said, notice it says who hold the truth in verse 18. You know what that means? They know the truth. but they're still in unrighteousness. You know, every day, we could all relate, there was a day you knew the truth and you didn't, you didn't give in, but praise God for a day you gave in, you said, I decided to follow Jesus. <laughs> Amen, aren't you glad for that day? Yes, right. But there's multitudes today that folks, they know, but they just won't give in. The Bible says that God uh, says they're without excuse. He showed him, Creation. In chapter 2, it tells us, you'll find, he, he's give you a conscience. Chapter 3, it tells us, he gave us a Christ. And you know, you won't stand before God and say, well, I, I had an excuse. No. He's talking about those that had no excuse. We find in verse 21, it says they knew God. But you know what? They ignored God. Ignore the Creator. It's amazing to me that man it can be so smart, and you know what they do? They make idols. You can find in the Bible they made idols. It always amazes me that the people of Israel uh, are there, they had a hard time waiting, and then they decided to make a God. And what did they make a God look like? A calf. Now, did you know that God uh, put us at the top of the food chain? We are to have dominion over all the earth. And it's hard to comprehend that man comes up, and you know, you'll find, a, in the, you'll find there's God, there's a God of the frogs. Now I tell you what, if the God is like a frog, you and I are in trouble. If he's like a bird, says a bird or a beast, you and I are in trouble. He's above all that. We can't comprehend that, Amen. You find, I, I saw this week, I thought it was quite interesting about how smart man is. On NBCNews.com, I saw come across on the news flash. It said, the, the, the foot bones of a toddler, boy, this is exciting. The foot bones of a toddler who died three million years ago show that the baby pre-humans could both walk upright like modern humans and scamper up trees like apes, researchers said Wednesday. Yeah. This was a thumb-sized fossil that came from a skeleton discovered in Ethiopia in 2002. And they have delivered priceless insights on how modern humans evolved from our distant ancestors, the researchers said. You know what the Bible says here, these people here, they, they heard about God. It's not that they couldn't believe in God, they just don't want to. We live in a world that doesn't want a God to be in charge, don't want a God to tell them what to do, don't want a Bible to give them some advice, they just want to do what they want to do. And I find confident that these researchers, if they truly look, you know what they would see? There is a God. That's the world we live in today. We find when it comes to seeing God, there's a time that God says, I've just had enough. 
Then you'll find, notice in verse 24, it says they gave him up. You'll find in verse 26, he said, he gave them up. You'll find in verse 28, it says he gave them over. You know what? God came to the point and he said, when it came to an individual, he said, I have had enough. Yeah. I've had enough. We find uh, there's a breaking point. You know, I, I thought about Cain in the Bible. I believe Cain's one of these. You'll find that God was patient for him. And by the way, there's no doubt Cain believed there was a God. His mom and daddy told him about him. God spoke to him directly, face to face. So there's no doubt he had a knowledge of what was right and what was wrong. But you know what he chose to do? To do what he wanted to do. And you know what God said he did with him? He cast him out of his presence. That's what he did. He said, I've had enough, Cain. I've had enough. By the way, I'd have had enough when Cain talked back to me. And then when he asked his brother, he said, Cain, now where's your brother? And he said, God, am I my brother's keeper? Can you imagine even talking to your parents that way? God said, that's enough. And the Bible said he cast him out of his presence. That's a place you don't want to be, folks. Yeah, right. You don't want to be there. You'll find individually there. He'll come to a, an individual and he cast him out. You find even, you know, that, that uh, you can talk about a lost folk. I believe Cain was lost. The Bible warns about don't go the way of Cain. But you know what? We've got to be careful. Even as a child of God, there's times in my life I'm confident. You know what God says? That's enough. There's no doubt that Samson was one of those. Samson, no doubt, knew about God. He had experienced the power of God. But you know what? He let some things get in his life. He let a woman get in the way there. He let some things sneak in there. And you know what? All of a sudden, he forgot about God. And he thought it was all about him. And you know what the Bible said? The Lord left him. And you know what? He didn't even know it. Not until he tried to do something. He realized, hey, that power wasn't me. It was him. And I tell you what, God said, I've had enough. I've had enough. You'll find Jonah, I think Jonah is one of those characters I can't believe God put up with him. God had a plan for him. There's no doubt that Jonah was a preacher and he preached the right thing, but I don't know what happened in there. And when there were certain folks, by the way, uh, I still have a God that wants to see all saved. Yeah. Even the Ninevites. And he went to Jonah. We know the story of Jonah. And we know what he, he said, no, I'm not going to. He even ran from God. You know what God said? I've had it. I've been pretty patient with you. I've, talk, I've been talking nice. And well, you know what happened. And God, even in his grace, was showing grace toward Jonah. He sent a whale. Amen? He did. But the fact of the matter is, I have a God. We've got to be careful. Amen? You'll find that there's a time that God is going to say, when you know the truth, you know it's right, and you just don't want to do it, you don't want to retain God in that knowledge, you want to do your own thing, God says, I've had enough. You'll find he said it to a city. I don't know why or how it was all, how it took place, but Sodom and Gomorrah was a wicked place. Abraham wanted to spare it. He said, if I could just find 50 righteous, you'll spare it, won't you? He said, oh yes, I'll spare it. If I could just find 10 in this big city, you'll spare it, won't you? Abraham thought to himself, he thought, surely there's ten. But you know what? God knew there wasn't. And you know what God said? Yes, that's the, this God that we think is a loving, and he is a loving. He's long-suffering. He said, he said, I've had enough. He said, I had enough. And we know what happened there. Uh, there even science today uh, knows that something took place in that area and they tried to rationalize it. I read about this. I think a mediator hit it. You try reading about that, what the scientists said. I think there was a day a mediator hit it. Yeah, you know what hit it? God did. God said, I've had enough. I've had enough. 
I think about a lot. We've got cities today I believe are wicked. I don't know. I don't know why, but it seems like a lot of times they're on the coast. You go out on the west coast, there's some wicked cities. Yeah. You go out on the east coast, there's some wicked cities. You get in the south coast, there's a wicked city. I know years ago, I went down at New Orleans for work, and I tell you what, I cannot believe. I, never, I, could, I was shocked of what I saw. I remember this had been many years ago, and and I know a, a gentleman I worked with was going to bring his family, and I thought, don't bring your family down to Bourbon Street. That's where they all go. They go down there, and i never seen such wickedness and things I can't even describe, and right there in the windows and everything like that. Yeah, I tell you, it's sinful. Yeah. And you know what? They glorify it. And I don't know, but I tell you what, there's a time that God says, that's enough. He says, that's enough. But he's long-suffering. He sure is, amen. You find he comes, you find there's a, a, there's a time that, that God said to a nation. He says, I've had enough. By the way, he did that to Israel. You know, he said, I've had enough. I've had enough of that complaining. I've given you everything. I've blessed you. And you know what? You turned from me. And you know what? We know what happened to Israel for, for thousands, a couple thousand years. They were not a nation. And it's by grace and his, his great plan in 1948, you'll find they became a nation again. There's nothing like it that could ever happen in this world, but God did it. Yep. You'll find his judgment will come on a nation. You know, this is a nation that knows. You know, I think about our nation, and I, I, last week I shared about how wonderful, and I'm glad for our nation. There ain't no better place I want to be than right here. And we are still a great nation. But you know what? We're on a path uh, that is away from God. Amen. And you'll find, you know what? It's, I believe if any nation would be judged harsher, it's our nation. You know why? Because we know about this God. Yeah. We know about our heritage. Yeah. We know about the Bible that God has given us. We know there's a creator. And you know what, though, we find? We just don't want to know it. Sure. We want our own way, do our own thing. And I'm going to tell you what, I don't know when, but there is a God, there's a God that he'll get to a point, he'll say, I've had enough, America. Yeah, well, we need to pray for our nation, don't we? Yes, See, there's a God that says, I, I just got to that point, Amen. There's also a time, we know it took place in the days of Noah, where God said, I had enough of this world. It's hard to comprehend, but he said it was such a wicked place. And the Bible says when the next time he comes, it'll be like the days of Noah, and we're on that track. Oh, yeah. We find there that he said, I had enough. He said, my spirit will not always strive with man. And God wants to strive with man. But he said, my spirit will not always. There's a time I'm just going to say, that's enough. And it's an awful thing that did take place. The flood came, didn't it? There's many passages in the Bible about the return of the Lord. I'm going to tell you what, Jesus is coming back. There's a passage of the ten virgins that are waiting, and it said five were wise and five were foolish. Five had oil in their lamps. By the way, that oil is the Holy Spirit. You better have Jesus when the, when, the, when the bride comes back. We find five had the oil, and we find that when the groom came, it says they went in. They were ready. Are you ready this morning? Are you ready if you got the oil? If you got the Spirit, amen, you're ready. And they went in. And you know what the Bible says? They shut the door. He said, I had enough. There were five good folks. They went to the same church. They went everywhere. They, they were in the same place. But they didn't have the oil. You know what they tried to do? They tried to get the oil. But you know what they found out? The door was shut. God said, that's enough. The Bible said the Lord is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish but you know, in the very next verse, it says, but the day of the Lord will come. Right. There's a day the Lord is going to say, I've had it. Yep. It's enough. Yep. It's over. And the door and the opportunity 
is going to be shot. We got a mentality today that says, well, one day I'll get right with God. You better get right today. Because there's a day the door will be shut. There'll be no more opportunity, no more preparation, no more inviting. When I think about this, I think it's very interesting. The five, uh, the five virgins that went in with the oil that were pure, amen, praise God, uh, they got in. But the other five said they were foolish. You find that's the Greek word for the word moron. And I'm going to tell you what, this morning, if you've not trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm not afraid to say you're a moron. You're foolish. Today's the day. The devil says, you you got tomorrow. Hell is full of folks that are saying, well, I thought I had more time. I thought I had to get a better understanding. I tell you, if you know that you don't have Jesus in your life, you know that you've got sin and it hasn't been dealt with, you need to do that today. There's a day, time, the Lord says, I've had enough. I shared this verse in Sunday school this morning. The Bible said when the gospel has been preached to all the world, you know what he says, then the end's going to come. We're living a day, I tell you. You know what? The Lord wants everyone to know the truth. You can see it in creation. You'll get it in your conscience. You'll find it through Christ, amen. I believe we've got missionaries of some type in every nation today. They've got means today. And one day the Lord is going to say, that's, that's enough. And you know what? Praise God. I'm looking really forward to that day myself. I'm ready. That old ship of Zion's coming. Amen. It's coming. Amen. You can see it about down there out on the horizon. And it's heading our way. Amen. Oh, one day the clouds are going to be rolled back. The windows of heaven are going to open up. He's going to shout. Say, come up hither. He's going to come on down here. He said, I've had enough. Yeah. And I tell you what, it feels good to be ready, don't it? Amen. Amen. We live in a world don't think it's going to happen. It's going to happen. One day, he's going to say, when it comes to sin, I've had enough. You know, uh, I kind of, I wanted to add this. You know, one day, when it comes to Satan, He's going to say, I've had enough. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. I like reading that passage. Amen, where he, it takes him. And he tells him in the lake of fire. Amen, forever. He said, I've had enough of that. We're done with that. I've been patient enough. I've been watching. We've been doing this. Amen, praise God. I've just had enough. I've had enough of him already, haven't you? Yeah. But you can mark it down. One day there'll be enough of that. Then I got thinking, you know, one day as the Lord looks down, I like this as a positive thing. He looks down at the suffering. And you know, one day the Lord's going to say, enough. Enough. Enough of that suffering. Enough of that heartache. Enough of that crying. Enough of that tears. And he's going to say, I've had enough of that. Come on up into glory and receive your reward. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I heard one say one time that they thought maybe God had a jar. Imagine if your life was a jar. Every time you had sin, a, a stone or a grain of sand or something got put in that jar. And when it finally got full, you know what God says? That's enough. I've tried. I told you. I've given you the knowledge. I've given you a country. There's churches everywhere. You got the best selling buy is the word of God. I've given it to you. And you know what he said? I've had enough. You know, as I thought about that, imagine. You know what? Uh, I'm confident. If I didn't have Jesus Christ, you know what I'd be faced with? A full jar. And I don't know how much more it would take before he says, I've had enough. You know what, this world, we've got a world, and I believe a God can save someone when they're dying. I believe that. 
But you know what? There is a point. Don't you count on death. Don't you count on that. Amen. There's a point that God says, I've been trying. I've given you everything that you need to know. And I said, you what? He knows. He just says, I've had enough. I'm glad there's one that can empty the jar. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know how full our nation's jar is, but I believe it's getting full. Their cities, the jar is pretty full. But most of all this morning, your jar. You got to deal with it. Yeah, I like that song, the account was growing more every day. But the one day that the account, the account was settled. Have you settled that account? Let's all stand this morning. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we have a God that's mercy is new every morning. We have a God that is long-suffering. But the Bible does say there's a time that he gave them up. Said, I had enough. And Lord, maybe there's one here he might say that he's getting close to that. He doesn't want to say that, but he does have that limit. There's that day that we might think we have another opportunity, but God, is he passes through, he passes by. The old ship of Zion is going by, and if we don't get on board now, we won't have an opportunity. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. Lord, we've lost the fear of God. We think that we have a God that we can just go over into a light switch, and when it's convenient, we're going to do it. The Bible said when he draws us, when he knocks on our heart's door, uh, that's when we need to respond. Lord, I pray that you'd ask one more time, one more time, knock on that heart's door. One more time, uh, convict him. One more time, give him an opportunity, Lord. Father, help us today. Help us to be thankful that that jar can be cleaned out. Father, have your way in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Oh, there's a God that's loving. He's long-suffering. He's been knocking. He's been speaking. He's been showing you the great God, the creation of this wonderful universe. He's been telling you since you've been smaller the wonderful plan that Jesus came while we were yet sinners and he died for you. He died for me. So that as many as that received him, as many that received him, have you received him? I didn't say you just said a prayer. I didn't say you didn't, you just, maybe you joined, maybe you did this, maybe you did that. No. Did you receive him? Are you ready? Boy, if you got any doubts, give it to Jesus this morning. There will be a day, he says, I've just had enough. Have you got the oil? It'd be an awful thing to have the door shut.